Hey yo, this is Paleoc, and in this sound design tutorial, I am going to make and design a shepherd's tone filter phaser rack thing that you can use for uh, making shepherd's tones. And then also you can just use it for like some really wonky, crazy filtering effects to throw over other sounds you have. So um, I'll show an example here. This is I made I made this earlier today, and I'll show you how to create it yourself. So I have uh, this basic saw wave. And with a shepherd's tone rack, it should sound like this. So you can see it's working. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can pin this to inside the DAW so you can visualize it while I work. That would be cool. Neat. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I have this. I can also change the direction. Change the speed. You can change the uh, the range of frequencies that it's going over. And then you can offset um, half of the frequencies to do to be playing at a different interval. So. so, like right now, they're kind of laying over each other at the same time. And there's just a bunch of other knobs that, honestly. It's really difficult to explain what they're doing until you build a device yourself, but that's also the benefit of building these devices, because then you have a complete understanding of how it all works. Whereas, at least in my experience, whenever I like download some rack or device that someone else has made, I really don't know what the fuck I'm doing, and I can make very limited sounds compared to what they can make, but when I make my own racks, I know precisely how everything works, and then I can create whatever I want. And I'm going to take this extremely ironic moment to advertise my Patreon. Uh, I just made it, $15 a month, and I'll give you access to a bunch of these racks that I've covered in these videos, as well as other ones. Now, I still think it's important to be able to build the racks yourselves, but it's pretty time-consuming and we'll give you a little bit of carpal tunnel clicking around constantly. So, you know, if you want to avoid that and you want to financially support me and thus motivate me to actually make more videos, then you could do that. That would be cool. And then, yeah, there's also going to be other uh, racks and devices in here that I'm not going to cover in these videos. So get some exclusive content for generating sounds that you can then pick apart. And then in the future, I'll probably post like project files and stuff like that. All right, so I just spent like 25 minutes building this rack and then realized that I railroaded myself into a weird spot that's gonna take about 15 minutes to undo, making the whole recording kind of useless. So we get to start over, woohoo. Okay, so we have our sound source here, super cool. Uh, and then we're gonna start off with an EQ8 as the basis for our filtering. So I'm going to turn on all these little nodes here, and we're going to want control over all of them. And then I'm going to start creating some maps. So first, something weird we're going to do is we are going to put all of the gains in macros. And then we're going to set it. So the maximum gain is zero. Now, you might be asking why, why is that? Well, first, okay, I guess first I should have probably explained how Shepard's Tones works, because I did that in the original recording that I just deleted, so that's cool. Okay, so we have this, and we're gonna wanna create a Shepard's Tone. How do you do Shepard's Tone? Um, you can use it with LFOs, but two LFOs, and they're both gonna be set to ramp up. And I'm going to set this to this guy, and I'm going to set this to this guy. And then I'm going to crank it. And I'm going to raise the Q. And I'm going to make this one 50% the phase of the other one. There you go. That's your shepherd's stone. 
super fun. Uh, let's make the range 70. 50 to 75. 50, 75. And then um, let's do the phase inversion trick so that you only hear the filtering and not the initial source. Now, the problem with this is the there's an immediate discrete jump, so it's kind of jarring. So if you want to avoid that, you're going to need more LFOs. And so like this LFO is going to have to be set to be a triangle wave, which is going to end up controlling uh, the gain, right? So this is going to be 50 to 100% because 50% is at zero. So notice that there's no discrete jumping when that happens. Then we're going to need another triangle doohickey for the second LFO. This one's going to be set to phase 50% because that's what this one is doing. And then this one will control the gain here. Now you have a smooth uh, shepherd's filter with only two frequency bands. Now, the problem is that takes four LFOs to do two bands, and if you want to use every single filter, then you're going to have to use 16 LFOs. And if you're going to want to be able to fuck with the modulations of all this, to be able to like move where the filter is around in space, you're going to have to use multi-maps for every single individual LFO, because they all have their own unique phasing. So you're going to need 16 LFOs, you're going to need 16 multi-maps, and then it's just going to crash your Ableton. I know this because I did this before. So let's not do that. But that's how you make um, a shepherd stone. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to use the Hypnos Spellbook. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you should watch my other videos and you should buy it. It's really cool. It's a multi-mapper. Uh, it's two-dimensional. So you can map the X and Y axis. You can spin it around. Make it do cool stuff. You can map the X and Y axis to different parameters. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do some like kind of atypical stuff with it. So I'm going to uh, turn off the read and spin mode. Um, so the dot is up here all the way at the tippity top. And I'm going to map uh, all the nodes to the frequencies. All right. So at that point, I made the exact same mistake that I did in the first recording and then proceeded to waste another 20 minutes doing the exact same thing. I'm really smart. So um, don't put the spell book inside this audio effect rack. We're actually going to put this audio effect rack inside of another audio effect rack. We'll call this the EQ rack or something. And then we're going to put the spell book inside the main rack, but not inside the EQ rack. That uh, is important. So um, the reason why is this EQ rack, the entire purpose of the EQ rack is to make it so the maximum value is zero and the reason why we want to do that is because it has to do with the offset parameters in the spellbook so um all right for now i'm just going to map the spellbook to the frequency of everything and you'll soon understand why okay and uh, set them all to X. And then I need to adjust the phase of every individual one. So you can adjust the phase by clicking on this arrow. This is a super powerful tool. The only downside is that the phase parameters for each mapping is not automatable. I looked it up on the website and they said it was for CPU reasons, which I mean, that makes sense. That's fair. A device can already do so much, but I am a little bit sad that it can't automate that because then you can do some really fucking crazy stuff it's like like the only way i can think of where you could get around that is you'd have to use eight different spell books all controlling one parameter and at that point like why why you know anyways um oh uh, i'm doing this because these are the values for one eighth two eighths three eighths etc because there's eight nodes right so 87.5 and then zero or a hundred. I'll make it a hundred because it looks nicer. Uh, if this spins, cool. Um, let's put a phase inversion at the end of this giant thing. Uh, I gotta use 
utility interface. Now you hear nothing, right? Now we're going to want another spell book. So I'm going to duplicate this because it already has all the phase adjustments, so I don't have to type that in again. I'm going to unmap all these. They're not actually mapped to anything, I think. Uh, it's just when you duplicate them, it's a little bit buggy. And then I'm going to map all of these to the game. Ooh. I have done so much clicking in the past hour recording three versions of this. Um, yeah, I'm going to want to make the cue high for everything so that it sounds real filtery. Oh, and uh, because the x-axis, so the x-axis is controlling frequency we designated, right? So as this thing moves around, as it moves to the right, the frequency moves to the right, as it moves to the left, the frequency moves to the left, and then there's a phase for every single one. Um, what we also want it to do is we want the gain to go up to zero when it's moving upwards, and then when it's moving downwards, we want the gain to come down. And so to do that, it's kind of working like a circle, right? And so we just map the y-axis to control the gain of everything. It's going to do exactly that. You can see how it's a circle. Oh, I forgot my, my, I forgot my cool spectrogram. I'm sorry. Let me fix that. There you go. Yeah. Now, the problem right now is at the moment, when it's coming back down, uh, it still takes a moment before the frequency hits null. It only actually hits null in the center, because that's where the tippy top is. So it's going to go, because you can see the center is here, which is when the frequency is in the middle, because that's where the x-axis is, and that's the highest point. So to fix that, we move the offset all the way up. And that is why we created this little gain rack thing over here, because then you could set the max value to be zero. And then when you bring the offset all the way up, uh, it sets that for every single point above halfway in the y axis, it's just going to be at the max value, which is zero. And then for every point below, which is when it's, you know, moving downwards in this case, it's going to move below. So. Now you got a cool working functioning shepherd filter, but we want to be able to control some parameters within the shepherd filter. So let's create some macros for the spellbook. So uh, yeah, we're gonna to want to control the offset of every single parameter. And then yeah, I'm going to want to control the range for all of these parameters. All right. And now you look at the EQ rack. I'm going to name this uh, range or frequency range, frequency offset. Now you might be thinking, but wait, this only moves up. How do we make it move down? Good question. So to do that, we can take a look at the gain. Uh, so as you can see, if you're able to just invert the y-axis, then it's just going to invert whenever the gain plays and right or whenever the gain is dropped down, which effectively brings the filters into effect, right? Because of the inverse phase. So to do that, you can just change the phase of the filter itself. So I'm going to take the spin offset. We'll name this, um, I don't know what would be a good name for that. Shepherd phase. Okay. Uh, so right now when it's at zero, it's going up. And then when it's at 50%, it's going down. And then if it's at 25%, uh, it's only going to be at the bottom. And then at 75%, it's only going to be at the top. Now, those don't sound as good, but you know, maybe maybe you can do something cool with it. And then we're also gonna want to control uh, the spin interval, right? Yo, 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 yo,
Oh, that's cool. So there's also these read, there's also these read knobs, the read interval. So um, let's just map it here, and then if you turn it on. Starts doing stuff. However, honestly, the pentagram shape is kind of boring, I think. Uh, this one's pretty cool. And we'll set this one. Uh, and so that just adds some movement that on its own. And then, oh, there's also there's also this offset knob which can change the sound of things. Um, so I'll map this here, map that there. So when it's dragged all the way down, you're gonna hear. Well, you, you can already see. And that's cool. You can see the circle. It's an open. It just like looks visually really cool. And then the pattern it makes here is also cool. Um, I also I highly recommend getting a like a spectrogram device. I'm using uh, mini meters. I think I'll link it. I think it's ten dollars. Um, super worth it. Really fun to do sound design with. Changes your approach a little bit and how you think about like making patterns in sound. And uh, it's just really satisfying and fun to just listen to music and watch the spectrogram. Okay, so I need a name. I don't know what I name this. Uh, gain offset, I guess, because that's literally what it is. Um, and then I'm gonna need more knobs. Oh, and something you're going to want to map as well is the reset switch. Um, every once in a while, the spellbook will get fucky, and things will... When when you press play, it won't it won't be playing the correct, like, LFOs if you have, like, the read interval moving really fast. Okay. I, there we go. See, now, now it's not doing the right thing. So... Uh, we can just you need know, this reset and then you just twist that on and off and it resets everything for your project file that way everything stays consistent uh, okay and then we're also going to map sync down here I need this sync I'm going to do this so that we can uh, turn on and off spin mode and then we're going to map the spin frequency here So, if you want to do sound design. So, you can turn on spin frequency, and this is going to alternate between these two knobs. Alright, so at this point, you might be thinking, hey, this is cool. You're super cool. Thank you for the tutorial, Paleoc. I'm going to listen to your music. And I would say, thanks, do that. But also, uh, I want to have more than just four bands acting at the same time, you know? There's there's eight bands to use, but you only get four that are actively moving in the barbershop pull. Because it's just a barbershop pull effect, basically. Um, so to do that, well, guess what? Since we used an EQ, which is subtracting frequencies, that ends up getting passed into a phase inverted version, you could just duplicate all of this and have another... EQ. And if I'm correct, we can offset the phase of this by just a little bit so that this is in between, so that all eight of these dudes are going to be sandwiched in between the eight other dudes. And so uh, this is what, 12.5%? Yeah, 12.5% difference. And so Half of that is just going to be 6.25. So 6.25. I oh, want that dude stuck. Okay, no, I know how we can do this. Okay, so the current issue that I'm facing is I want to set this to be 6.25. However, I'm already using this 
uh, to change the phase of the shepherd filter, right? So I'm just going to go to, oh, geez, this is a nightmare. I really need to color this. Okay, uh, shepherd phase, this guy. Okay, this one's going to be between 0 and what's 100 minus 6.25. It's, what, 93.75. And this one is going to be 6.25, 100%. And now the relationship should be constant between them the whole time. And so I think that should do it. Yeah, I just had to reset. Okay, and so right now the read interval knob, I want to make that an independent thing. Run that from read interval. So let's do the second one down here. So now there's two, both of these shepherd filters and now you can you can make it so that both shepherd filters are doing different shit. And uh, let's start fucking with the sound source now. Um, let's open up Serum. Let's map this to pitch. Okay, and then from here, we can apply a low-pass filter and map it to an LFO, have the LFO set to envelope mode.
Um, I just remembered something I want to add. Uh, I want to be able to change the spin offset of the two spellbooks relative to each other. So we'll just map that here. Um, I'm going to make it slow. Anyways, uh, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, I'm just gonna turn this off. And then um, let's make this constant. Oh, gain offset. So you can hear all the different bands, and if you change the offset of them relative to each other. Um, so that's that's cool. I guess let's go back to messing around with these parameters now. Okay, um, so we're pretty much done here, I suppose. Uh, I don't really like the positioning of all these knobs, and unfortunately in Ableton, for whatever reason, you can't just move knobs to other positions. Um, it's just not a thing you can do, so to get around that, you get to put your rack inside of another rack, and then you can map your rack parameters onto other map rack parameters, so you can rack while you rack. Let's uh, just do this again, but uh, I'm just gonna slightly change things up. Um, for instance, okay, yeah, let's keep let's keep these knobs the same. I'm gonna want the read intervals to be somewhere else because those are directly related to each other. Well, hold on, how many how many parameters do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have twelve parameters. So two. There you go. Yeah, okay, this this works. And then let's put sync here, and then I'll spin interval here, and spin frequency here. So turning this knob switches between these two. Um, and then we'll have reset down there. You can have Q right there. Put both of the read intervals next to each other. And let's read interval one, read interval two, um, and then we'll put uh spin offset here i guess and gain offset there and now let's color some of these so we'll name we'll color that i don't know that color um, these should both be the same color uh and let's do that with the phase two because these these three kind of select what the timbre is of the sound while these two control how the um, two shepherd filters act relative to each other. Oh, this one does also. So I'll also make this that color. And the gain offset is just a weird knob that also kind of affects the timbre. 
Um, let's make that Q as well, because Q and gain offset change the timbre of every individual filter. So and we can name this Maliac Shepherd Rack. And then you don't have to look inside of it ever again. And then you get to throw this into your user library. And yeah. Yep, we're pretty much done. Um, I hope that was helpful and that you learned something.